everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Triple Trio, our weekly look at all things Hong Kong racing with the best form analyst in the business, this guy, and also the Hall of Famer in that guy. So looking forward to a big show. Hello, Hutch. Hello, Richo. Yes, another big weekend. Saturday at Hong Kong this weekend at Sha Tin. We've got to pick up the game a little bit. It was a tough week. It's been a tough week. We were celebrating, uh, you know, the or singing the praises last week, yeah. and this week it's like, oh, no, we need another more match time so we can get back in and improve on the, the weekly effort. We were celebrating your success mm. last week. We blew a lot of wind up your skirt. <laughs> Not necessarily this week. Mm. We will, of course, to the Golden Boy. Hello, Golden. Looking forward to a big show. Yes, uh, Derby a week away, so that's good. The Golden Slipper in Australia a week away, so not far. Oh, we can't wait. In fact, we'll talk about the Golden Slipper because uh, no one knows it better than uh, Raymond uh, Shane. You know Dye. they like to name races after yes. you know, horses. It's been a bit of discussion recently as well. I mean, the Slipper, are at the Raymond Shane, oh, you know, you like he has won. He did win four of them. Mate, the Raymond Shane, surely there's a race named after you. It might be a, you know, a, mate, a benchmark 64. Be because, <laughs> mate, you've got to suck up to everyone. <laughs> you've got to be political. Pol politically correct, yeah. and you're not allowed to have an opinion. Right. So I'm out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight you right. are. Hey, we've got a huge show coming up. Uh, we're going to burst out of the gates with all the latest news in Hong Kong. Looking forward to Nicole Purton uh, continues on her great chats, and they've been absolutely fantastic. And today we're racing, of course, on a Saturday. So we've got all the best bets with Hutchies Honkers. And also our very special guest, one of the greatest jockeys to ever ride around the world, the great Mick Kanaan. Mick Kanaan, who spent so much time in Hong Kong. So we want to talk a little bit about his role now, a little bit about the past as well. But, yeah, as far as Mick's concerned, I mean, in my lifetime, he's top three. That's how good he is, uh, in my opinion. Well, yeah. you might reveal the other two uh, in a moment's time. Mm. Plus also sweet in defeat file. Let's burst out of the gates. We burst out of the gates with the reflection on the Group 1 last Sunday. Uh, congratulations to Brenton Avdala. Brilliant ride. California Spangle turns back the clock, Hutch. Yeah, it was a great ride. Left alone, sole lead. By this stage, it had a little bit of rain through the day. The track was definitely feeling it. He enjoyed it. He got a soft lead, Shane, and look, he drew away under a well-rated ride to win. Excuses for a couple in behind, though. Oh, lucky, you know, as should have won. It was a slaughter. Bigger, one of the biggest slaughters all year. It should have won. All he had to do was go forward and it wins. And he, he pulled the wrong rein and went back. And I've been giving James a lot of raps, as you know, and he's a superstar, but he definitely got that one wrong. Hang on, the biggest slaughter. So let's go through the race. Where could he have gone forward? Let's go through the race and analyse his ride. There's nothing wrong with being... Th I had him three wide up, up there outside a happy... Uh, uh, healthy, happy. Happy, happy, healthy. The only thing he couldn't do in the race was go back, and you could not be behind Beauty Eternal. It is impossible for Beauty Eternal to beat Lucky Schmerz when Lucky Schmerz is in front of him. He's lost four links here going back, where he could have been five to six links closer, and he wins the race sitting three deep. And there was actually a chance he could have got in there, but it wouldn't matter. If you don't bustle your horse out of the gates and are up there three wide, it's irrelevant. If you bustle them out of the gates and you're three wide, then it's a different ball game. The race is over now. He's got no hope of the way of winning. Now, the other thing he did was he got going at the 700, which is the worst place to get going because everyone says Galaxy Patch is a good race, a good run. It was, but he had to do that because he wasted no energy. You have a look at him. Lucky Suez is working here going forward. This is the one part of the race that he's made his run from the 600 to the 400, and then he's going to be a Spence force. Galaxy Patch has done nothing in behind, and that's why he's hit the line late. But Lucky Suez, um, Galaxy Patch back there got the line good. Lucky Suez should have won for sure, as far as I'm concerned. Doesn't, no, he, doesn't run a drum and should have won. Do you agree, Hutch? Yeah, he should have gone forward. I mean, uh, I, I was surprised he went back on him. I think I think just using, just look, looking at uh, the race, I think J-Mac's very conscious of where Zach was. He probably shouldn't have worried about it. Didn't need to worry about him. Go forward. Sit a little deep like Shane said. I think Shane's analysis of that race is absolutely fantastic and I couldn't agree more. Um, he's the best horse. I think he actually would have parked outside uh, California Spangle. All that said, California Spangle was good. Great really ride, good. Great ride from Brenton. 
Um, and look, Lucky, I think, had his measure. I think if they're one, two in the run, maybe he wins, maybe he doesn't, but he couldn't win from where he was. But the other thing to take, I mean, Galaxy Patch was a great run. I know he was entitled to run on Shane, but yeah. his late sectionals, given the, the way the race was run, et cetera, were fantastic. And obviously we've got yeah. a bit to discuss about him as well, which yeah, we'll do. Yeah, we will talk about yeah. that. Hey, um, Golden, just quickly, I know you, you chat to James a lot. We give him so many bouquets, he deserves it. Did you deliver the brick bat to him and how did he cop it? <laughs> he was actually good. I think he realised after the race that uh, it was the wrong thing to do. But in the stewards' report, if you have a look at that, Manford told him, according to the stewards, that he didn't want him wide. But sometimes you've got to be wide. Like there was no way he could be get in in that yeah. race. He had to be three deep. Like, And there's nothing wrong with being three deep when, when the barrier tells you you're going to be like that, as long as you don't force your horse early to be three wide, right? And he could have just travelled up there, been fourth or fifth, and he may have got in one off, but it didn't matter if he didn't. Three wide was still all right. He wins for sure, that horse. And, and no I, risk. Yeah, I, did, I had a quick chat to James, and all I said, well, look, you know, a, He's a champion rider, and he gets it right more than he gets it of wrong. Course. They have these instructions. Oh. They've got split seconds. That's going to happen from time to time. I turn the page and move on. Happens. Yeah. Hey, oh, that's what, what that's what happens. Mm. It doesn't matter. It's, yeah. it's just irrelevant now because look at how many great rides he's had. He won on Romantic Warrior, which was unbelievable, yeah. outrode them. Yeah. Um, and he's been on fire, and he's a superstar, one of the best in the world. But he got that one wrong. Uh, Galaxy Patch is the other horse. And when we looked at that replay... That gave you a great example. That replay showed the inside part of the track. When you saw that, uh, not aerial, but the side on shot, especially when they went down the side, you saw how much was sort of... Uh, it was chopped advantage. away. Chopped away. But in you that know inside. what's amazing when the, this race, this track has a bit of cushion, you think, oh, the inside's off, it's all chopped away. It can often still be hard to reel in yeah. the leaders as it was on the day. The, the Frank Tank led on inside. They still... The better ground doesn't always yield the right result. I don't know, is it... Uh, the sand mesh, um, yeah. it, it could be, but it looks chopped away. But often it's just the horses that get through it. I, I know it's harder to to peg them back, but no, he was a he was a very good. So that was fourteen hundred meters, mm. and then we hear discussion out of that of a Hong Kong Derby. Is that right? It's correct. Late entry fee, two hundred and sixty thousand Hong Kong dollars right. to go in the Hong Kong Derby, and he's you get one crack at them, and this is on the wishes of the owner. Now all we can do is read what's been put up in the past. So I think Pierre was in was his trainer was concentrating on developing as a sprinter miler, getting him to settle, etc. The owner has decided after that path and after the run recently at group one level, I get one shot at this and I want to have a crack. And you as the form analyst, how do you rate Galaxy Patch versus those that have gone through the traditional path building up to the two thousand? It's an unorthodox way to get there. Um, Shane mentioned one recently, I think it was Ping High Star that only had sort of 1400 metre lead ups as well. If you're, if you're a genuine group one horse, you're going to be a big chance. And I think that's where Helios Express is. I'm not sure 2000's his right trip. It may not be Galaxy Patch's right trip either, but he's a very good horse. He's a group one horse. You were dancing around it beautifully, but I've asked you a very direct question. Mm. Can he win a Hong Kong Derby? Yes, he can. You can. He's in your calculation. Absolutely. 1400 metres straight to 2000. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Agree, Golden Boy? Well, it's not a matter of whether he can win or not. It's a matter of whether he can stay. That's the right question. Can he stay? If he can stay, It's a simple yes, question can. too, Shane, just quietly. Yeah. That's <laughs> a simple <laughs> question. It's not a matter of whether he can win. If he stays, yes, he can win. If he doesn't stay, well, no, he can't. It's as simple as that. Richard, Do you have you know? to stay? Well, Mahogany didn't stay, and yet he won two derbies. He was a sprinter. Can you just no, be too he, classy? The, 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 source is, the source is different because he could pull. He pulls right. in 12s, 100, right? So he's different, right? So there's a lot of horses that can run 2,000 that can't because they relax, right, um, this time of year for the derby as a four-year-old because they're just better. If this horse pulls in the derby, he's got no hope. Okay, well, how, how did you think he settled there, Shane, in that race? He was... Oh, uh, that, that's totally different. He was all right there, but that's totally different. But they put, they've put they taken the blinkers off him as well, and he seemed to respond well enough to that. So I get that'll, what you're saying, the tempo of a race. That'll help yeah. him. Okay, Star Mac or Galaxy Pat Shane? I want to ride Star Mac. Okay, uh, Helios. Not, a, not, a, not even a question to me. I Helios Express Mac. versus Galaxy Patch. Different ball game. You need to see the barriers. Mm. If, Hel if Helios Express draws wide, I don't think he can win. If the, he draws wide, fact that you even... if he draws a good gate, it's a different ball game. He can. 
Yeah. The fact you're even pausing means that Galaxy Patch is in this race. He's in it. Yeah, that's fa- it, what well, a you've fascinating got a And you know, and what they announced as well, well, everyone had taken rides. All the leading jockeys had taken their rides. So, big news from an Australian perspective as far as the hoop is concerned because Pierre Rung was pretty adamant that it really, he wanted to look for an Australian rider and Blake Shin has apparently been given the call-up. Wow, so mm. Blake's going to fly in to ride one of the key chances in a Hong Kong derby. And he became available because he'd been riding Elliptical, who hadn't been going very yeah. well, and he's, uh, he's there and available, so what a pickup ride. And he'll ride in the Golden Slip. He rides Lady of Camelot for Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott mm. in the Slipper, and then that flight from the Slipper towards Hong Kong. What a weekend of racing. It's at the right end of the plane. You know all about and, that. And yeah. Also, Richo, if you have a look at that derby field, they actually put a couple of horses ahead of an, um, a couple of horses like Elliptical yeah. that Clint said they pulled them out, put Star Mac in, which is a very good move. And it's best for the race. It's actually getting the best horses in the race now. Okay. So. They can probably, I mean, you're right, Shane, because he's been in there or thereabouts in the, uh, the mile of the cup, mile in the cup. Fallon, you know, he's been beaten in those races by Star Mac, but he did beat Star, um, Star Mac in another race. But they've really concentrated on the format of the two main lead ups. So I don't think anyone can really argue with their decision. Okay. Hey, a couple of other quick points. Um, Brett and Abdullah, riding beautifully, Unreal. teaming up with Tony mm. Cruz, they're flying. Look, this is a great association to have as well. Tony is a legend in Hong Kong. He's, he's you know, he's st- a stable starting hit form. With all due respect to the young lad who Tony supports a lot, his apprentice. You know, Brenton's taking over some of these rides and delivering, Shane. Yeah, this this horse here has got to be ridden back. And he, Tony's riding a lot more back a bit now, which is good instead of all on pace. The right horses can be ridden on speed, but not all of them. And that there is a classic example. I brought it out up last year when he was ridden forward. He would go no good. As soon as he gets back, he goes good. Um, the horse said he won the first race on the other day. Uh, Smart, Smart Beauty. Beauty. the same. Got to be ridden quiet. Um, um, his apprentice, what's his name? Um, Angus. He taught him to race. Angus taught him to race properly, get him back. And then the other day, because of the gate, he rode him a bit close, and it was a great ride. We're going to highlight that. He, he's going good now. Brendan. Yeah, he's going really well, uh, Golden. Also, you had a, a lot to do with Mark Newnham when he made his way over to yep. Hong Kong. You'd be pleased the way he's going. A nice double on Wednesday night. Well, he only started with about 30 horses and he's building up now, but they're going good. He, he didn't take many good ones, uh, like a lot of trainers when they come, but he's going good. He, his season's going to be next year and the year after, not his first one. He was never going to have a good first season, he thought. So he's going good. Two well, winners was good. Yep, not only that, uh, quite a momentous win because... That's Yulong's first winner in Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, and okay. uh, congratulations to them. I'm a bit dirty myself on the win because we backed at the start before the blinkers went on, had the right run and was too good. But no, well done to Mark. I mean, I think he's done a great job yeah. with the stock that he has. He needs to bring the better ones through now, and I'm sure he'll do that. But yeah, I think he's only had 170 odd runners for 14 winners. So right. he's going at a pretty good rate with the stock that he has. And like Yulong is part of that ownership group where they've opened it up worldwide. So hopefully we'll start to see some of the better stock um, come into Hong Kong. So how many horses can they have there racing in Hong Kong under Yulong, Mr. Zhang's banner? Um, well, in Hong Kong, the most you can have is three per right. owner. So four, four now, Clint. Four now, sorry. So yeah. Yeah. Um, whether or not they'll, I mean, I, I, look, each year they'll probably, they'll maybe get one, but I would hope that Hong Kong's desire, I would imagine that Hong Kong's desire, Shane, would just be to, at the top end, elevate, you know, some of their better horses coming through and Im- improve the stocks. Yeah, definitely. How it works, Richo, is you get a permit yeah, from the club. Now, there's so many a year to be given out, so you may miss out on one. Um, and you cannot have any more than four racing in your name, but then you can go into your wife's name, your brother's yeah. name or your daughter's name, and they can put permits in. As you see in the California um, colours, they have quite yeah. a few racing. And the beauties. That way. And the beauties, yep, they have a few. Beauties are the main one that have a lot racing through daughters and um, sons and whatever. But uh, it's a very fair system. You can't have a lot of horses. Um, a trainer trains 60 to 70, depending whether they've got horses at China or not. Mark come in with about 30 to 32, so he was light, but he's building on that now. And that's only for members of the jockey club? club. Like you and I can't just no. have a horse. And, that, and that's probably the little exception. I'm not sure if they get automatic membership or whatever. I think these owners, they must do. But, uh, you know, they've, they've attracted some big names from around the globe and, and hopefully we see some good ones go over. Well, we are available if we do get a permit. <laughs> um, uh, the, the hoops that are riding really well, a guy that's close to our heart because he really impressed us on this show and then he had time out 
is Harry Bentley. And he's he took so that well. right on the chin, yeah. and he is riding so well now. He's, he's flying, uh, I think, Shane, at the moment, Harry. Yeah, he's, he's going well. This was a really good ride because he had gate 12, and what you've got to realise is he didn't force him early. He took the, um, the bullet, and um, he sat three wide on him, but he kept them balanced. It was a good ride. Here's a nice win. This was a nice horse. He's only had a couple of runs, and he's improved. Yeah, Both runs, he's gone one run better. Up, up to 32 wins for Andrea at Senior. He's, he's another one. He just keeps uh, getting winners. Moments in time, of course. He went down a derby path. This race, I was interested to see how it rate with me. It didn't come out that well, so I think he's actually been running to his form. Um, I couldn't, I didn't find him on Wednesday, but uh, look, he was a pretty decisive winner. Well done to Young Angus. He's uh, he's getting some winners, and he put that horse on a spot and too good. John size within 14 of the title now. As we look at the uh, leaderboard in the championship, Pien Ung there at 51. Uh, Francis Lou at 40. John size at 37 with Ricky Yu and uh, Danny. And Casper are on their heels as well, whereas Zach is simply off and away. Huey Bowman not riding on Saturday. Well, this week it's Cheltenham, and you know they the, the, there's a leader out in front, yeah. And the body of the field are just with every stride make a little bit of inroads. But I think Pierre Ung would be quite pleased with what he's seen the last couple of weeks. That Aero Invincible that we just showed. He needs those younger horses to come through. They're going to win two or three, and I've just seen a few of those lately. But he needs to sort of allow himself a little bit of rain. There's some people coming at him. (laughs) That uh, is going to be a fascinating battle towards the title. Let's see who jumps into our black book called Sweet in Defeat. They're off and Sugar Sugar missed the start by four lengths. Then Dublin star, Sugar Sugar fast buck, smart leader. Oversubscribe, lunges at the post, missed. Sugar Sugar, that's a sweet win for Alfie Chan. Our Black Book segment is called Sweet in Defeat. The Sid File, who jumps in? Well, we've got a few horses from the last week and Stellar Express from the weekend. I'm going to show you that replay. Sweet Diamond working three wide, no cover, and he's ready to win a race. I liked his run in the first event, which actually rated okay on Wednesday. Beauty Infinity. Less said about that, the better. But uh, look, let's just say it was uh, less than ideal passage through the early stages. There's an option to go for. I can't believe he got within a length. Yeah, look, he he had clear excuses and uh, a couple of leaders missed the start. Let's get back to Stellar Express. Um, When there's rain about at Chartin, the the, the pattern and the rails ride out. The outside fences we know is better, but it's even more significant when there is rain in the ground. It can be anywhere from three to five lengths, in oh, my wow. opinion. Now, Stellar Express was well backed. He never found the right spot. There was nothing Zach could do because, you know, those horses have already filled those spots. But he was well backed there. He'll get a more even track, hopefully, in the near future. And I'd be sticking with him. Um, but, yeah, Baby Crystal found the right spot. And that horse is going well for Francis Lowe. But, Shane, that's something you would have noticed from back in the day. In fact, back in the day, when we even raced on the C3, you'd often see jockeys sort of angle right to the outside fence on a normal race cart. And there was some success in those days uh, with riders doing that, but they don't really do it anymore, although Zach did it on Beto on the weekend. Yeah, I used to do it a lot if I thought it was better out there. you got to understand that when I was riding, though, the track was different because the rail is now moved occasionally, you know, in the 1,000-metre races, Clint. We never had that when I was riding. The track stayed as it was. Yeah. Which is a very interesting discussion point. That's maybe something as a, a segue, a little bonus item on Hutchie's Honkers. I'd love to get to opinions on regards to, I'd love to nail in all rails around the track. Don't move the sucker at all. Let the jockeys find the best part of the track. Yeah, it's a fair call. Well, we've got a, we've got a call for you. We've got a plus six rail for yes. a really important race meeting on a Saturday. Well, it's an interesting discussion about the tracks as mm. well. We'll uh, talk about that yeah, another but Richo, time. Richo, Australia, uh, Hong Kong's totally different to Australia. Explain. Because what they do in Hong Kong is they start at A, then they go B, maybe B plus two, C, C plus three. So they start in and work their way out. And they always do that with good meetings. So the derby next week will go back to the A. Yeah. The international day would be. So you get racing on their big race meetings on the A track. But they never go from A to C back to B. It's always out. In Australia, they go all over the place. They just don't gradually work out. They'll go rail, six metres, back to three. It's not a gradual procession, you know. They they get it wrong in Australia, the movement of the rail. It creates bias, in my opinion, but that's that's another discussion point. You know that. Yeah, it, it frustrates me. But anyway, we'll move on. In fact, let's hear from Zach Purton because he's talking all things uh, track conditions. 
To me, they feel like they're a lot wetter than what they have been previously. Um, they're holding a lot more moisture, so whether there's more water getting put on the track or whether it's the, the conditions of the weather that we've had this season, um, I'm not sure, but the tracks have certainly been softer. Uh, the horses have been getting into it, the tracks a little bit more. Uh, it's creating a lot of biases as well. Sometimes you go to the races and you can't make up ground, you've got to be forward or you've got to be inside or the inside's off, you've got to be outside. And, you know, I always feel these tracks in Hong Kong race best when they're bone dry. Um, and that's reflective in the times as well. I know in some of the races we've lacked a little bit of speed. Um, there hasn't been as much pressure, but the overall times and they're, they're just outside of standard all the time. It, it doesn't matter how fast it feels like you're going along in the race, they're, they're still outside of, outside of standard. So um, I, I think the tracks are just a little bit too soft at the moment. Really interesting topic that, uh, thanks to the Hong Kong Jockey Club, that was interview was conducted by Tom Wood on, and uh, up on their website. Now, that was in reference to what Zach was finding with the, you know, the tracks this season. Yeah. And the times have been notably slower in a lot of races. And he's been highlighted, he, as he mentioned there, he's not sure if it's due to you know, more watering or you know, a policy, I'm not sure. But I have noted it myself and we've been, a lot, last couple of meetings I thought, you know, there's been some meetings with wind, there's been some r races with, you know, a little bit of rain about, but yeah. not a lot. But, but Shane, some of the, the times generally they're running now, I mean, we'll see it meeting in, meeting out. You know, some of them are sort of th anywhere between three and six lengths slower than what they would be normally. But could that be a good thing also, Clint? Because the horse population in Hong Kong is down and they're trying to get it back up. And the worst thing you can do is have rock hard tracks. It's going to go down further because horses can't handle it and you get injuries. So maybe it's uh, uh, they're doing it to try and keep the horses racing with a bit of giveness in the track. It's worth considering also, Shane, that where that horse population is coming from, if they're importing a lot of European horses, watering the track uh, for those more soft bone European horses would be a benefit to keep them racing, Shane. Yeah, well, that's what I yeah. more or less is saying. Yeah. But even for Australian horses, it helps them long term, like you don't get the leg injury. So maybe they're doing that. I don't know. I'm not sure of the data of that either. I mean, we this is a discussion that's very frequently had in Australia. You know, mm. when they had a policy recently to have all tracks in the good four range, which would, um, you know, so it's four horse welfare, basically. And it's a never ending discussion. So I don't yeah. want to go down that path. My only point would really be this, I think, because um, we've had a noted change from what has been in seasons past. As long as it's consistent, and the, and the punters can get used to it being in a certain range and they can deliver that, I think that will provide the confidence going forward. And um, it's just something that was noted and I think it's great that the club put that up. Good question yep. there from Tom. And, and I thought, you know, it was great points made from Zach as well. And he looked fantastic in his Zach, Zach Purton merchandise. He's got some merch if you need I've some. I've got a couple of his Have hats you? and wear them religiously. I, uh, when you're on the bicycle? Well, no, because I've got a helmet to protect my beautiful head. But any other okay. time I, I'm walking I, I, Mate, boys, I've brought it up before. I sleep with them most nights. Oh, oh. 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 That's I've got his T-shirts. He sent me some of his T-shirts. Really? I, you sleep with him? I always wear one to bed. Wow. Yeah, so. I, I thought he was more of a birthday suit in bed sort of guy. <laughs> As the kids would say, life. Shane, that's too much information. Far too much. Yeah. I've got a visual. I want to get it out. <laughs> Genius of slaughter next. Meander Cross answering the urgings of Shane Dye. Mannerism coming at him. Mannerism has got it. Daring tactics by Shane Dye. He's got octagonal in full flight on the corner. Bold tactics by Shane Dye are going to pay off and he pinches the chipping door. Genius or slaughter and golden boy, you've gone and put on your Zach Purton t-shirt. Show us it. Oh, oh, back, back Purton, keep the bookies hurting. I love and it. And even a signature oh, down here. He signed it for you as well. Okay, I go. like it. So it does sell merchandise. Oh, it's there's been... no way. There's well, no way I would have brought it. He must have sent it to me. Oh, of course he, he would. He bought it. He bought, he bought it. it. No doubt in that. Yeah. Uh, uh, it does, is Zach mentioned in your genius uh, segment? Let's have a look at who do you like. I thought this was a very good ride from Brendan. Smart beauty. He drew gate eight. He's been drawing wide this horse and going back. But he just got into a beautiful spot up here, midfield. And he, he was never going to lose this horse. But the best thing about this ride was how he waited on him for so long. He was very confident. See, he's looking, looking, looking on the head on to get across. And then he gets across. And he's just ended up in the perfect spot from gate eight. And he just waited for as long as possible. 
It was a great ride, Clint. It was, Shane, and like you say, happy to find the rail too. I mean, a lot of riders, they can be content to sit one off, but he went straight oh, down no, to the no, fence. No. Yeah. And, and well, uh, here, he is. here he is here, Clint, and he just starts to edge his way out. But you watch when he gets out up here, and it's a class five horse. He doesn't move on him. He waits for as long as possible, which is just perfect. He knew the race was his, and he just didn't want to get to the front too soon. And then when he goes for him, he goes for him, and he puts two links on them, and the race was over. It was a very, very good ride, perfect ride. When I see that, Shane, and when I see a rider sit cool like that in the mm. saddle, you know what that says to me? I'm, uh, he, this guy's riding with confidence. Yeah. He knows what he's got underneath. Let's go through Zach's ride here on Star Club. This was very good because he didn't bustle him out of the uh, gates. He was a dollar sixty, but he gave him a chance. But he showed that he's got the patience of anything. He waited back. This was just a perfect ride, and at no stage did he panic. And when you ride good horses like a, a Mugen, was it of Karras two weeks ago? He took him out of his yep. comfort zone early. When, when they're like this, if you ride them quiet when they should be ridden quiet, they will explode at some stage of the race. They don't need to be closer. So, and Zach saved ground, and he waited, and he would have been in a bit of trouble here, he thought. But he's on the best horse, and it was just a matter of coming out. And he just gradually moves out here, and when he cut him loose, he exploded. He's a class three horse for sure, this horse. Yeah, and you, a good point that you mentioned as well. Yeah, lovely ride from Zach there, and uh, I think the punters love that one. Yeah. Actually, the ride on the runner-up for Brenton was pretty good too from a tricky gate, but uh, too good the winner. What you said there about Star Club, I think, and Smart Beauty, it's interesting with those two horses as well, Shane. They both go up in class now. I think the way they're going, each one of them might be, you know, horses to follow as well. Just for, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Any slaughters worth noting? No, nah, well, I'm not allowed to give James any minuses because I don't give him any pluses, oh, but I would have fair. taken a few off him. <laughs> that's fair. So he would have caught one <laughs> right in the chop. Imagine lot. if he goes on the board and he goes minus one to well, start. Yeah. No, I would have put him minus three. Minus what? Three. You would have given him minus... Well, uh, you know what? That would have been fine because he would have already been on 30. That's so he would have gone back to 27. <laughs> yeah, of course, we are talking about uh, racing's highest individual honour, the Mighty Idol. And here is the leaderboard for the Idol. Or oh, not the leaderboard. First, let's give the points, Shane. Yep. Brendan rode sensational over the two meetings and uh, very good rides, so he's got to get three. Alexi gave Happy Together a very good ride, and he also won on solid impact, I think it was. Remember, he was on the fence and couldn't get out, and at about the 150, he switched in, it just blew. Was he had stayed win. on the fence. Yeah, yeah, I was on the second horse too, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Zach gave this just the perfect ride of all time. He deserved two for that ride. And these other boys have ridden doubles and going good. Okay, yeah. so therefore we tally that all up and we have a look at uh, the leaders board for the time-honoured idol. Uh, who can have this magnificent figurine on their mantelpiece at the end of the season? And at the moment, Nicole will have to move one of the trophies aside, Shane, because your beautiful head will be on their mantelpiece. Yeah, <laughs> they'll love that. They'll love that. Um, lead by six. I got at it. Yeah, a couple of, <laughs> couple of the other boys. I'm, I mean, Harry's riding really well. I wouldn't be surprised if he picks up a little bit, a few more points. He's starting to get some good hey, rides Brent, too, Harry. And Della. Brenton's riding really well. Yeah, I think a lot of those boys will uh, they'll finish strong. Okay, beautiful work. Uh, we did speak about Nicole Purton and what you do with her trophy cabinet. We love our inside running segment with Nicole. One of the many important professions that help Hong Kong racing tick is that of a veterinarian. I'm going to join one of the young stars of the vet team, Charmaine Tam, to find out more about how she contributes to the jockey club machine ticking over. Charmaine, what's your role within the vet department? I'm one of the clinical vets in the veterinary clinical department. Um, so we're all under the jockey club here. So what we do, we look after the day-to-day -day health of the racehorses. So we are assigned to different stables and we basically go to the stables every day, every morning. And I also have a special interest in imaging. So I do a lot of the CT and MRI scans for other stables as well. So as a kid, I love dogs and cats. And I was lucky that I've got like cats. I've, I had cats and I had dogs as a kid. So it's always been at the back of my mind that 
or maybe I want to become a vet, but I didn't really think about it until I was applying for university. Um, and then I went to the UK to do my A-levels and there I was exposed to horses, like I was doing some horse riding classes. And then when I was applying to vet school, it's one of the requirements that I need to have some horse experience. So I applied to Tim Moon Public Riding School to do some husbandry work, just to know about horses and more so just to tick the box and say, see, I've done some horse experience. But it turns out it was a pretty amazing experience. I got on really well with the people. I met my old boss, um, who's um, the riding school vets here in Hong Kong. Um, so I ended up going back almost every year, um, every summer break. So Charmaine, what does a day in your vet life look like? So we usually start about 7.30 in the morning. We'll go to our regular stables to do routine trot ups. And we sometimes we take bloods just to monitor the health, like longitudinal monitoring of the health. And by examining the horse, we don't always only see the problem horses. We sometimes see the sound horses so that we know how they look like in training and how they look when they are in food exercise so that we can monitor them going forward. Uh, like today is barrier trout day, so a lot of the times we'll be scoping these horses after barrier trout to check for bloods, tra uh, check for mucus, um, just to see and check the upper airway to check if there's any um, reason for them not performing or, or any reasons that need treatments that can maintain his fitness and peak performance. So Charmaine, you've had a horse come in to receive an x-ray. Can you tell me what's happened to him this morning? So this horse um, stepped on a sharp object this morning um, and then it was pooed out and so we brought him over here to x-ray just as a precaution to make sure that the sharp object is not poking into any vital structures within the foot. I'm just getting the stuff ready for this horse. So we are planning to do a regional perfusion. So I'm just getting like some sterile gloves ready, some local anesthetic, and we need to put a tourniquet because we're injecting into the blood vessel. Okay. So we want to localize the antibiotics within the foot. So by placing the tourniquet, we make sure that the antibiotic kind of stay in that region okay. and not disappear off the leg. Okay. So the nail's already come out? Yeah, the nail has already come out. Okay, and yeah. so how we, are you going to x-ray him or how yeah, are you going, going to x-ray him. So what we're going to do now, the leg is already blocked, so we'll remove the foot bandage, we'll clean, give the foot a thorough clean, and then we'll put a probe and stick some contrast in, and then see how far it travelled. And then we'll be doing some antibiotic injection in the foot as well. So how did he go? He stood perfectly still. Um, we took some x-rays just to make sure it's not affecting a lot of sin uh, underlying vital structures and it looked okay. So we're just going to put some antibiotics into the leg and keep the leg bandaged for about 15, 20 minutes. And how long would a recovery process be for an injury like this? Uh, it's usually pretty quick. It depends on the horse. Like it's a horse to horse basis. We've seen horses that um, we need to do a couple more injections just to keep the infection under control. Some horses never take a lame step and because we probably addressed it early enough and that's the advantage of being here because it happened this morning and we get to the horse within one hour of it happening. We give the leg a thorough clean and now we're injecting antibiotic like within this like golden time frame. So hopefully we are, we are on top of everything and he will make a good recovery. Well, well done to you for being on top of it so quickly. <laughs> Oh, great chat there with Nicole Pert and giving us some wonderful insight into equine welfare through with the lens of the veterinary science. So great stuff. Nicole continues to find some wonderful characters in Hong Kong. Talking about wonderful characters, our absolute pleasure. Our star power guest, Nick Kinnane.
Well, our very special star power guest, uh, a champion hoop all around the world and now picking the ideal horse flesh for Hong Kong conditions, is the great Michael Kanani. He joins us uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, Michael, always an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Uh, must be great feeling to be in Hong Kong. Oh, ah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been second home for me for uh, so many years and it's great to, to be able to continue that connection with this uh, great town. And a great connection you have as well, uh, Mick, of course, with Romantic. Where we'll just touch on him quickly and, and uh, speak about him. I mean, you must be so proud of what he's achieved and around the world. And uh, to have him as your, your sort of banner horse that you, you've chosen for the club, uh, that's pretty special. Uh, yeah, to see him do what he did with the Cox Plate this year was, you know, phenomenal. He had a tough run through the race and he showed, he showed fantastic grit just to get there on the line so yeah it was fantastic for listeners downhill from, from here for me i'd say <laughs> can you remember when you first saw him and why you thought he'd be suited to hong kong conditions and then what it was like when you saw him on debut he was just uh, uh, a beautiful model uh beautifully balanced horse with a lovely eye um and looked like a you know real middle distance horse um yeah like from Barrier trial to win at the Happy Valley first time out, it takes an exceptional horse. And uh, it was very exciting from that point in time. He looked as if he was going to be something special. Yeah, I remember watching the race at the time. Uh, Joe Moreira was on board here, Mick, and you know how hard it is to yeah. sit at that at the Valley to sit three wide on debut without cover facing yeah. the breeze and draw <laughs> clear. I mean, they just don't do that. No, no, it's just such a tough environment to come to. And, you know, to go to the Valley against hardened, hardened horses, you know you're something special if they can overcome that. And Michael, just explain to our audience exactly what you do for the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Yeah, I, I buy the, the, the yearlings uh, and uh, put them into nurseries and, and try and prepare them for, for Hong Kong for the, for the international sales. So um, this is the, sort of the fourth batch that uh, we have here currently at the moment and there's some for sale this evening. Uh, Shane, when I say the word uh, and the name Michael Kinane, what comes straight to your mind? Oh, outstanding jockey. Um, I admired uh, Michael. Uh, we were we had a good relationship, you know. We never had a problem. And um, he was very, very strong in a race, and he kept horses balanced always, but very strong and outstanding. Well, he won a Melbourne Cup. Look at that. And it was a sensational ride. And his, his riding in Hong Kong when I was there riding against him was outstanding. Um, he knew how to get a dollar, didn't you, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I had some great teachers around me. I was only trying to pick up the scraps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey, yeah. Michael, one quick question. Um, <laughs> you, you, you brought Romantic Warrior. Have you got another Romantic Warrior from the horses you've picked this year? Might never find another one like him, um, of course. But I have a few, a few nice horses. I've had a few little hiccups with veterinary when we get. It's it's tough to get a horse this far and, and to have them as clean as you buy them as yearlings. So that's just the criteria that the Hong Kong Jockey Club have. It's very difficult to cook for every horse to come through it. Um, so we have sort of five left on the list this evening and three sitting on the sidelines that would probably still make it. Um, so, yes, there's a, there's a beautiful invincible spirit horse out of a pal, which is a, he's a first fall out of a, a group. Uh, uh, he's a beautiful individual very athletic uh, seems to have a good temperament uh, you just don't know when you get here you know, it's, it's difficult for horses uh, it's, it's very tough it's the hardest place in the world for to win a race so there's the five I have I like uh, two, two, uh, two other Star Spangle banners which are very hot at the moment um, and I have an on a never which is a really nice horse so um yeah, so what I have, I like uh, that they have come through. Uh, you know, we prepped them pretty tough, so uh, try and prepare them for the the tough environment that is is Hong Kong and and the training. Yeah, well, I mean, Mick has done it. For those who don't know, I mean, has actually bred an English Derby winner as well, of course, with Authorized. So there's not too many jockeys and champion jockeys in the world that have sort of dabbled in all this other, you know, the, the bloodstock and uh, been as successful as you, Mick. Mick, just a quick note. Now, of course, when you're in Hong Kong for all those years, you rode, uh, you know, you retained on a sort of, a, a, you know, a sort of, a freelance basis with um, David Orton. And now we see David's uh, nephew, of course, David Eustace, travelling over oh, there yeah. to uh, to train as well. So it's sort of, 
not full circle, but good to see uh, you know one of David's um, relatives go over to Hong Kong and train. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting for him. I think it's a huge step for him, and uh, you know, but he, he has, you know, I don't know, hope it's a success for him. Mick, while we've got you, uh, we see a lot of uh, sons and daughters of Galileo, and we've got a rare opportunity, and also see the stars. Uh, we've got a rare opportunity to chat to the man that steered the mighty Galileo. Can you give us some insight to this freak of a racehorse who became a once-in-a-generation stallion? Yeah, like he was, he was perfectly balanced horse. Like he went around. Epsom is a very taxing place for horses. It, it, it it asks everything of them. It asks them courage and balance and speed. And, and it's, you can't appreciate what Epsom is like unless you walk it or you actually see it. When, when like you, the, the, the descent from Tatnam Corner down is, I think, is probably 80 feet. And the climb up is to the top is something similar. So it's huge. And the camber is, it, you just can't really see it. And it, it is a, a Huge test of a very young three-year-old's career in racing. Yeah, an amazing uh, job that he's done at Stud. And, and what about See the Stars? I mean, I read something recently, Mick, where you said, uh, you know, this horse is pretty special. Or I think you were being a little bit uh, conservative <laughs> with your assessment early on, but it was still a big a big rap for the horse. Ah, like uh, he arrived up when I was... 50 years of age, or 49, um, and he was able to carry an old man around very, very successfully. So, but he was a phenomenal resource. Uh, you like most harbors that they're, they're fragile, they're you know, they're highly bred, and you're always sort of trying to mind something uh, with the thoroughbred. But this fellow just had it all in spades physically, uh, mentally, he was so sound, and he was just a leader of the pack. He was a very special horse. Oh, he was an exceptional horse, see the stars. Uh, Viva Pataka, was he the best horse that you rode in Hong Kong? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was a very good horse. Uh, very well trained by John Moore when he was here. He was a, just a, a, he had a great ton of pace. Um, he, was a, he was a very good race horse by any man's standards, yes. Yeah. Well, now some of these shots uh, from back in the day, a uh, little grainy, Mick, but... Uh, <laughs> they're still, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've still... just come out of black and white. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mick, we know you love uh, coming down to Australia. You're still, uh, mm. you're still making a regular visit down under these days. I know for years you used to head down to Sydney and see some close friends there and spend the, the, usually the winters and, and our summers. Yeah. Uh, do you still manage to, to get fit that into your schedule? I haven't. Uh, <laughs> But I suppose we're all probably just taking playing a bit of catch up. But um, yeah, Kevin Moses is still still in touch with Kevin and uh, um, and and Catherine with your mum. So uh, yes, the plan is to hopefully to get back soon. When you come down, Mick, we're going to make sure we we'll give him oh, the A one treatment. A one treatment, right, absolutely. Right, Michael, one quick thing: the Melbourne Cup that must have been special on your resume because English horses weren't coming to Australia then, and he was one of the first ones to come. Irish, it, Irish, 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 Shane, Irish. 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 Sorry, sorry. Was it <laughs> that he won so easily, or did you expect him to win when he came? We did. We did expect him to win. Um, he just sort of came a bit under the radar because he hadn't run. For so long, um, they sort of made him out as a hurler. He just a horse that didn't need track much track work to be fit. So you know, yeah, we did think he'd win. He, he you know, he was pre favourite and they talked him out. And uh, you know, he was he was eight pound better off with uh, drum taps with him at favourite of the day. So you know, you know, the world has become a smaller place and everybody's a lot better educated. The way there's so many ways of skinning a cat and. Uh, there's many ways of training horses. It's not just one way, you know. So, Shane, I can tell you that time Mick was actually riding in Hong Kong. His good uh, late friend Robin Park and a lot of other Irishmen and a big Hong Kong contingent had a very good result. Oh, look at his face. <laughs> they thought a very they, good they thought result. Never see another poor day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Michael, how was so. the atmosphere? Was it? Did you expect it to be like that? Because you've ridden in all the big race meetings around the world and won most of I, it. But that day's different. How was it for you? Ah, it was a huge learning curve. Like, it was fantastic, you know. Um, but it was... Nobody can really uh, uh, prepare you for the normality of where the, what the, the race brings and the attention that's to it, you know. So it was an eye-opener and a fantastic... Uh, something that I'll never forget that, uh, that 
I was able to achieve, and it was it was something really special. And it was just so lucky. I mean, talk about pioneers. It changed racing. Totally changed racing. Yeah. Drum yeah. Taps was the favourite, ridden by Frankie de Tori. Yeah. Mick Ganarm was on uh, Dermot Weld's horse. At some stage there, it looked like that there was a big storm around in Ireland. Is that right, Mick? And um, Dermot thought we won't be able to get the plane in to pick him up, yeah. and suddenly a little a little gap in the clouds and. The the, uh, the jet flies in and picks up the horse. Yeah, they, they were on their last lap, really, and there was fog. And they just were able to get in. And luckily, the horse wasn't too far away from the airport. And he was able to rush in and get in because otherwise he wouldn't have made these, the connection. So, But it was just meant to happen, I presume. Yeah, yeah, no doubting. And you would be asked that question time and time again, talking Amazing. about uh, the Melbourne Cup. Uh, we're, of course, looking at the international sale that's going on tonight. That in we Hong are. Kong. Um, while we've got uh, Michael with us, um, Lot 11, uh, a zoo star. We've put the G1 goldmine lens through. Yes, great supporters of the show. <clears throat> and this is right in the wheelhouse of Group 1 goldmine. And it's uh, obviously the information you can get for pedigrees is fantastic. We have an aptitude uh, profile here. And this is a 2020 match. And it's a program that I'm sure the club and uh, plenty of people around the world use in order to find the bloodstock that you want to get hold of. And this is the Sioux star out of one more honey. So looks like it'll be a good 12 to 1600 metre horse. And lot 16 of by Australia, of course, being a son of Galileo. With all the analytics, this is a, a part of the thing, I think, which is really important when you are looking at an impact profile. So gold is perfect. This is well above the industry standard in terms of stakes winners. And uh, here we have it, lot uh, 16 by Australia out of uh, Ultra Appeal. But this is a, you know, this is like I said, for Group 1 gold mine, and there are, um, you know, so many advances these yeah. days in all the analytics and statistics that you get from uh, these breeding programs and Group 1 gold mine stands at the top. Make sure you get involved if you're gonna purchase in Hong Kong or Ooh. any sale around the globe. Oh, I like the sound of that. Hey, Mick, as we come back to you, I, I look in the background, it looks like you've got a lot of functions you need to attend. You've got a lot of shirts ready to go. This is going to be a busy time for you. <laughs> I, didn't get, I didn't get a chance. I was, I was on the way back from the track. We were late. I didn't even get a chance to pull the, pull the wardrobe close. As we let you go, it's been fantastic going down memory lane. Uh, as per every time we have anyone from your generation, can you sum up uh, Raymond Shane Dye in a few words, what he was like to ride against? It was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a positive experience? Good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Hey, Mick, and as always, an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Thanks so much for taking the time, and good luck tonight. All right, take care. Oh, fantastic. The one and only, the legend that is uh, Mick Canone. Race at Chartin on Saturday. Make note, we're racing on Saturday, so get ready, get your pins uh, poised, and race number five, Hutch, who do you like? Yeah, it's a very competitive race, uh, the fifth event, as are a number on the card. Mixed meeting at Chartin, but I'm pretty keen on number 12 and dead. Uh, has a rising grade, been caught wide without cover recently, clear excuses, Oriental Smoke's in good form, and I think Beauty Missile is another one that's uh, right in the game as well. Now, Here's a look at uh, the run from a couple of horses that are in, in this arena. race. And Ace Victory is one of them who had to do a little bit of early work. A lot of these come out of uh, this key form reference. Um, yeah, I think he deserves a little bit of an upgrade on the back of that. Beauty Missile was obviously very good. I think these horses won't be too far away and probably can improve, Shane. But um, I was keen on Endeared and the main reason, the rising grade... Needs a bit of luck from the gate, but I thought had it to do a lot of work recently and there were excuses uh, at the Valley on that wide run. Yeah, um, drops back in distance, of course. Um, I've got Beauty Mission uh, Missile on top after its last run. It was a very good run. Form before that was just average, nothing special. So from gate four, there's plenty of pace here with Super Fortune. Ace Victory will probably push on more than he did the other day, and he should. Uh, Pitar uh, took a sit the other day. He'll push forward. So there's good pace in the race. E Legend will go forward from gate one, but he'll box seat probably. That race that, so, we, that race we showed as well, um, Shane Parter held up, like you said. Yes. And Sunny Darling made an early move. Derek took off at the halfway. It was probably yes. a better run, a lot better run than it looks. 
Yeah, well, he's six wide going around them and, of course, weakened and had to. But I've got the 10 on top, uh, Beauty Missile. Okay, yeah, uh, and Hutch has got the 12 on top. Yeah, so. I think Indeed deserves a little bit of respect. I mean, and maybe a cue for yeah, them they, with the seven. Of course, they went to the Valley Mile. It didn't work out for him, but he was knocking on the door previously, and I just feel that he's a horse that uh, could certainly go on with it and bounce back. He'll need some luck from the gate all that. It's bit. not a strong race, that, Clint. No, no, and, I th you know, that rising grey, drop in weight, it's a big factor. Race number nine, Zach Purton rides the golden scenery, horse number one here. But you're with Young Champion. Yeah, it's a good race. Um, <clears throat> Young Champion was well ridden by J-Mac last start. He, he landed in the run, got the right run. But this is a particularly even event. Um, there's not much between him. Blue Marlin's in great form. He comes up in class, but he maps beautifully. Lucky Encounters trial well recently. Another one on his best form can be competitive. And I give has no weight at all on his back. So he's one that could really improve. But young champion got a lovely run, patting on side this day, but it was his second career start in Hong Kong, uh, Shane, and he's going about it the right way. Yes, he is. He's a nice horse. Um, he's not going to go backwards, one of John Sizer's young horses, so he's only going to go forward. I give won't run 1,400, I don't think, um, Clint. I don't think he can win. Uh, 1,400 will test him. He'll leave. He might be looking for a class drop. Uh, the one you said, Blue Marland, it's probably the horse to beat along with Young Champion. It's going to get a beautiful run third fence. This was a, a race where they developed into a sprint home, and <clears throat> pardon me, the golden scenery um, out wide ran on well. I don't know how much we trust that form. Fantastic treasure all comes through that bit of a sprint home. So it is an easier assignment for a couple, but, um, you know, they've gone sort of back up in weight now, and it makes it a little tougher for him. It's interesting, like you said, Shane, there is a bit of speed. Uh, you could well be right with I give. I'm not um, sold either way if it'll be too far for him. Maybe they'll think then uh, that he won't get the trip and leave him alone. You may well be right. Uh, I've got to keep him on the safe side, though. He's had too good a season. But either way, <clears throat> Blue Marlin and Young Champion, each of those, uh, I think, uh, have got a great chance in the race. And let's not forget, I give will only have 110 Ten. pounds on his back. That's that is... That's I don't know, what is that, Shane? About 49 kilos, 48 kilos? 110 pounds is <clears throat> 50 kilos. Yeah, not much. Absolute featherweight. Yep, not He's much at all. Um, whereas Zach Burton's riding uh, about 135 pounds, the uh, toppy there in the golden scenery. We move to race number 10. How did you line these up? Another really competitive race. Interesting, there's some speed here with Outgate, who'll go forward. Uh, there was another one, Sweet Briar won't be too far off them, and Windcheater out wide. I thought this was one of the better bets on the card, Windcheater. His two runs to date have been excellent. I know he's not drawn favourably in Barry 11. Harry Bentley takes over, but he's just a progressive horse, and I had him on top. He was just anchored a little bit with the weight here. It was a race that suited those on speed in terms of the race shape and tempo. He was out battled late. But Shane, I like him up in class. He's a, he's a younger horse that um, hasn't got the experience. He's a three-year-old. Now he drops seven kilos or six or seven kilos in weight. And I think that'll make the world a difference for him. I Yeah, I totally agree. I don't think the 1400 is going to be a problem, Clint, with no weight up there on pace. Um, you would think looking at this massive action or lead from gate one, and he just could come across and sit outside of him. It's not a strong class three again, this race. So he honestly gets his chance to win. There's not too many chances in this race, I don't think. No, Outgate went forward. I thought the young lad went a bit soon, but his actual form Outgate is, is okay. And he's racing well. I think massive action will run well because he's going to land there on pace for free. And then um, only use the last start when a win sheet. It doesn't need to lead either, Richo. Uh, on so debut, what, he sat behind and what will Harry do? Through. He'll go forward. I think he's got to err on the. I think he's got to be trying to be a bit positive on the gate. The rails in the C plus three as well. If there is a pattern, it's generally up and in a little bit with yeah. the rail right out, which is I think worldwide. When the further they go out with the rail, that can be the case. But he's a nice horse, and um, for Mark Newnham, he's done a good job. So win cheater for me. Okay, that's the, it. These tracks have been riding on pace lately in Hong Kong. Yeah, they, they certainly have. have. Come yeah. from last. The, 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 they're on pace for sure. Maybe if they're good enough, they win from midfield. But the things sitting back last haven't been able to get in it for weeks now in Hong Kong. Yeah, and those that have been making ground have been doing the RS die, cutting the inside. corner back inside, haven't yeah. they? So. It's been notable. I mean, we even we said an A course, and Shane's mentioned it a number of times over the course of the Triple Trio, that you know usually when we get rail true, those swoopers are, are okay. But the last time we were on the A, 
It, it wasn't. Was, it was certainly mm. not that. Um, and I wonder if that's in connection with what we spoke about earlier, just about a uh, little bit more juice in the track. So, you know, keep an eye on it and we'll see how we play on the weekend. Our very best bets for the weekend. And of course, Hutchieshonkers.com is simply your one-stop shop for to guaranteed success. Let's hope so. Talk to me, big yeah, boy. Last race. Thinking? I really like Wind Cheater in the last. Okay, I think he's got a fantastic chance. I do want to take a Quinella. I think we're going to throw in Outgate. They're, they're going to be on paces here. Massive action. And Sweet Briar, I like Zach Purton get on, getting on him. He's actually going from a mile back to 1,400. So I think that's a positive. It's a good Quinella race. I think Wind Cheater can provide Mark Newnan with another winner. And then uh, in a very competitive eighth event, there's three horses here. I don't have a great deal between them. And, it, you know, the track pattern could be interesting, but the Absolute has trialled well, lightly raced progressive, sunlight power in good form, and Invincible Lucky, who I think will be really well suited and not have to settle so far back. So four, five, seven, and a box Cornell and race eight. A couple of good bets early in the card. Log on to the website for those. Okay, and of course, this is a, a little... Uh not a lower grade meeting, a uh, lower key meeting, because next week we build up to the big one. Yeah, the derby. And and then after that, of course, into, you know, yeah. the QE2, Champions Mile, and... etc. Fantastic. Shane, uh, a best bet from you, if I can. I'll go race seven, number three, victory moments. Um, he's only had two runs this season. He had his first run on the dirt last start, and he was very impressive. I know he meets most of these about eight pounds worse, and he's got an awkward gait, but, geez, he was impressive last start. He went up a notch on the dirt, and he's only got to maintain that to win again. But it's not an easy race. There's a few nice chances in the race that meet him eight pounds better, but he was very impressive last start, Clint. Davis. Yeah, he was $14 there. I think you get a reasonable price. It's a it's a competitive race. Yellowfin yeah. back in trip. Fast bucks up in class, but he's racing really well. Good Buddy was a great run in that race. So there's only Smoky two. Beer. Yeah, there's two key form references: the Victory Moments race, and of course there's the Adderfield race, which was over a little bit further. But that's a good race, Shane. I think you'll get. He'll be each way odds for sure. So uh, best of luck there. Yeah, good luck, mate. And then uh, we build up towards the uh, the Hong Kong Derby. Uh, Golden Boy, as always, mate. Uh, forthright with your opinions. A lot of fun as well. Thanks for your time. Nice seeing you. <laughs> See you next week. It was an experience. It was, I love that. That's one of the absolute highlights. That might be a little clip for us yeah. into the future. What is it like to ride against Shane Dye? It was an experience. Quote, unquote, for Vic and I. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to your company next week as we build up to the Hong Kong Derby.